Not in my book, and I can't see either, so I don't know, you know. Amen. It's good, <laughs> good to be in the Lord's house this evening. Let's all get a hymn book, turn the page. 165, let's sing the first and the last verse. Amen. Stand together. <laughs> Come expecting a blessing. Uh, it's good to be back in the Lord's house, and uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Has anyone got a prayer request with an uplifted hand? Brother Mickey. Amen. Remember Miss Pansy. Amen. If that's all, uh, let's go to the Lord. Lord, we love you and praise you. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for all your many blessings, God, and we thank you, God, uh, for allowing us to come back to your house, God. Lord, we uh, pray, God, you'll be with the prayer for us mentioned here today and the ones that were signified by hand. Lord, that you'll just uh, intercede in every situation. And we with God and so that everyone involved know that if you need help, uh, you showed up. So be this service, Mike. Be with these young girls that are Sing and uh, also be with uh, uh, love you and praise you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, we have Masters Men and Women's Auxiliary on Thursday night. Our church is going to be going to Canaan for their revival on Wednesday night. We have a work day tomorrow night to work on the Easter Place stuff. Tomorrow evening, uh, anytime after 4 that you can come, uh, we'll be there and uh, be glad to have you. And we're going to have a good time of fellowship uh, as we work. And uh, hey, man, how many of you come to have church tonight? So we're going to shake hands, tell each other you love each other. I'm going to let someone from this fine family here where these young ladies are going to be singing, maybe stand up and tell us who you are, because is that putting you on the spot too bad? Either one of you, any of you? Or maybe Trevor can, somebody. Yeah.
And what's y'all's names? Amen. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that, but I couldn't remember all them names a while ago. She told me them names a while ago, and I couldn't remember. So anyway, we're glad to have y'all. So after we get done shaking hands, girls, y'all just come on up after we get done shaking hands, get ready to go. And uh, man, if y'all play us one, and everybody just kind of fellowship and tell each other you love each other, and uh, then we'll have church. Preacher Tim's going to do the preaching. These girls are going to do the singing. To the river of Jordan, our Savior went one day, and we read that John the Baptist met him there. When John baptized Jesus in Jordan's rushing water, the mighty power of God filled the air. I'm on my way to the river.
don't know how, but I know this much. The healer hasn't lost his touch. He still restores and he still redeems. He still renews and I still. There are times in this life when fear is so heavy and burdens weigh on your mind. You are weak in the knee and no strength can you find, but just hold on, helps right on time. And my Jesus, he's always on time. And though you may see your valley, he sees the mountain you'll be standing on. When all you can see are the tears falling, faith put to the test and I have watched as the storm blew and with the thunder but in each trial he knows what's best and I am so glad he knows what's best and though you may see
Have you ever felt the warmth of the sun after another long night was done? And you open your eyes to a brand new sunrise. God's faithfulness is there again. New mercies, new compassion. When you lost all hope, He never left you alone. He's good like that. There's never a moment He doesn't know exactly where you're at. No matter the sorrow, He'll be here tomorrow. That's a fact. He's good like that. Have you ever felt so unworthy? All your blessings so undeserving. You don't understand why God would be so kind. He bottles every tear you've shed, numbered every hair on your head. Hasn't he always proved he'll take care?
But you're gonna lose this battle tonight Cause remember, you can't cross the blood Praise the Lord. Next time y'all come, just plan on singing for about an hour. <laughs> Amen. If that didn't bless your heart, you need to get saved. Amen. Mm. My, my, my. That was good. If you have your Bibles, let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. I'm going to preach on something tonight that I don't think I have ever preached on. First Chronicles chapter 4. Some of y'all kind of had to pull the pages apart because you ain't been right there in a long time. Some of y'all going to hear a name you ain't never heard before. Amen. First Chronicles chapter 4, look at verse 9. Be there, say amen. amen. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that mine hand might 
hand, that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. God, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you uh, for the sweet songs, God. And thank you for, Lord, we can just come in and worship you and honor you, Lord. I thank you, God, Lord, that we can come in and feel your presence tonight, Lord. God, I ask your hand to be upon us right now. God, I pray, God, you would just move in a special way, God, in this church. Help me as I try to preach. God, get me out of the way. It ain't about me, God, and I realize that, Lord. I, I love you. I thank you for what you're doing. And whatever's done, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach a little while on the thought of getting out of your comfort zone. Getting out of your comfort zone. How many of us, you know, if, we are, if we're all honest, we've all got a comfort zone. When I, when I tell people uh, 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 what we keep our air conditioner and our heater on at my house in the wintertime, they look at me like I, I got three heads. That's our comfort zone. I, our, our heater is set on about 64 degrees. That's, that's what I like. I, I, want, I like it cool. I don't want to get hot. Amen. Everybody's got a comfort zone. Every one of us. We, we, we all feel more comfortable around, clean around certain people than we do around other people. When we come, when we come to God's house, that's why you know, uh, you always heard the old saying, birds of a feather flock together. I mean, you find people, and, and it's different in, in church sometimes, you know, because you come in and everybody loves each other and everybody's there. But, but when you go to a, 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 on your job, when you go to different places, you got your comfort zone. And we've all got those things, those places. And have you ever got around people that you didn't feel comfortable around? Have you ever got in a situation, and, and, and this ought to be the same for every Christian. When you get around people that's not saved and they're doing things that Christians ought not do, that ought to make you feel uncomfortable. Amen? But we've all got our comfort zone, so we structure our lives around that comfort zone. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> It's kind of funny, um, me and my wife's been married uh, this coming year, be 38 years. And the older she gets, the more out of that comfort zone that I find her getting. David, now we can be going down the road at nighttime and she you need to slow down. You need, they, they're deers everywhere. You need to slow down. You need to slow down. Where, she, where used to it didn't bother her. It don't bother me. But that's just, the way, that's just the way things are. As life goes on, our comfort zones change. And it's all right to have comfort zone. It's all right to be co comfortable around your job. And it's all right to be comfortable around your family. But if you ever get complacent with your Christian life, you're in trouble. If you ever get complacent with your prayer life, you're in trouble. If you ever get complacent with your Bible reading, you're in trouble. If you ever get complacent with your worship, you're in trouble. If you, and this is something I want to emphasize to our church. If you ever get complacent with the Easter play, you're in trouble. It ought to be something that, and like I say, you know, I, I, tell, I tell people when I, about our church, about this time of the year, things start picking up. About this time of the year, you can, t you can feel the, the, the atmosphere change in Liberty Free Will Baptist Church because things start gearing up toward the Easter play. This, this, this does more for our church most of the time than most revivals will ever have. It brings us together in unity. It brings us, and, and, and some people over the years have gotten out of their comfort zone as far as the Easter play. But we can't get complacent. Skip, we can't just look at it and say, we've done this so many times, we got this. No, you don't got it. Without God blessing, it ain't going to, nothing ain't going to matter. So, man, just start. Have you got complacent with your Christian walk? Have you got complacent with your Bible reading? Have you got complacent? You know, it, it, it's something when, when the band is going to sing, Brother Terry starts getting antsy because he wants it to be right. And that's good. Amen? That's good. You ought to, when you do something for God, you ought, you ought to want it to be right. Amen? We can't get complacent, you know, and that's, that's the problem a lot of times. If anybody, if anybody had a right to be complacent, it was Paul. The Apostle Paul had every right to be complacent. The Apostle Paul had 
every right, uh, uh, Kevin, to say that I've reached my spiritual place. And I, I you know, he was an apostle. He was, he was, he was, I, I'm telling you right now, I believe he, he's numbered with the 12. Amen. But what did the apostle Paul say about his spiritual walk? In Philippians chapter 3, verse uh, 10 through 13 says this, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for apprehend for that which I also am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Paul said, I, hey, I ain't there yet, so I ain't going to quit. Amen. So how do we get out of our comfort zone? Real quick, let's just look at just a few things about Jabez. Number one, his personality. Think about this. As I, I, as, and, and, I, and, I'm a, and I know all y'all great Christians in here, all y'all super Christians that love reading the Bible, just love it when you get over there and this one begat that one and this one begat that one and this one begat that, and you read every last one of those names, don't you? But ain't nobody saying nothing tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you, Brother Robert. I don't know if I've ever read through all the begats. That's right. I'm just being honest. In my Bible reading sometimes, you know, when I, uh, Alan, when I get to that part, I, I, I'll throw in a CD and I'll listen to it while I'm going down the highway so I can say I covered that part. <laughs> Me and you the only ones in here tonight, David. I'm a, me, me and you going to have a good time. Absolutely. This here hypocrite and preacher right here ain't saying a word. I'm telling you. That one over there just grinning. Y'all better talk to me. I know, I know, I, I, Kevin, I know you go through all the baguettes. Brother Donald, I, 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 I've been to Brother Donald's house, and, and, and Brother Donald, Brother Rob, he has three or four Bibles out, and, and Scott, I, I know Brother Donald goes through all the begats. But it's right in the middle of all these begats that these two verses are hidden. Think about this now. Everybody else was, everybody, I, I want you to kind of get a picture. Everybody else was happy with just going, begat, 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 and J.B. says, no, I ain't doing that. J.B. says, no, I, 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 I got to be different. Everybody else was simply just happy having brothers and sisters and sons and daughters and dying, and this one begatting that one and dying, and this one begatting that one and dying. And if Jabez's life would have been like everybody else, it would have said, and Jabez begat this one and died, but it don't say that. Sometimes you just got to say, I'm going to be different. Amen. Sometimes, you know, the, the, the problem is there's very few people, let's just be honest now, and me and Jamie, Jamie didn't know this, but when, when me and Jamie was talking before church, he, he was kind of nailing it down that I was in the right place. There's very few people that will rise above the crowd. There's very few people, and, and Brother Robert, you've seen it, and David, you've seen it, and anybody else that's been in sports or coached, you've seen it. And we were talking about uh, uh, Jamie's son that wrestles, how, how he, his, he's got a focused goal. He's got a goal on his mind. He knows what he wants. He's going to go for it. He's got a great support group. He's got everything that he needs to be the best that he can possibly be, and he's doing it. I'm going to pick on somebody. Do you ever see anybody that was better in golf than you were, but was not as dedicated? He said yes, in case you're wondering. Now, this, this preacher was a golfer. Most of y'all already know that. Put a golf club in his hand, he was bad to the bone. Put a Bible in his hand, and he's badder to the bone. But I'm just saying, people, I, I, I'll give you a good example. My brother, I got a brother. His name is Terry. Look at him right now, you wouldn't think a whole lot. He's got him a little gut. He, he, he's kinda, he kind of slouches a little bit. and it went, went, 
But, but playing baseball skip come natural to him like pouring water out of a bucket. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, he played first base, Brother Donald, and it was just like he would just flow. I mean, everything was just so easy. I had to work like a dog. But the thing about it is, very few people ever rise above the crowd. I got to thinking about it as I was studying on this. Do you want your life to be David begat Tanner and Tucker and died? Robert begat Brett Lloyd and died. Or do you want something? Ten years down the road, what are they going to say about you? And I thought about Brother Carlisle Hanna. I'm telling you right now, from now to the end of time, if time lasts for a thousand years, from now to the end of time, Carlisle Hanna will be known in India. People in South Carolina will probably forget him, but he'll never be forgotten in India. Billy Graham will never be forgotten in America because they rose above the crowd. They rose above uh, 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 what everybody else was doing. Now, that, now the problem that Jabez faced, his, mo his mother named him Jabez, which means son of my sorrow, which means pain or affliction. He's going to cause pain. How would you like, when I thought about this, David, I thought about Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue. Don't look at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about, all y'all hypocrites sitting in church. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going I'm to preach. I'm going to get in your pew in a minute. I'm saved. I don't know who Johnny Cash was. You lying joker in church. We all know the, 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 the song of a boy named Sue. How about a boy named Jabez. He's going to cause pain. He's going to cause sorrow. J.B. says, I, I, I ain't living up to that. No, I, I'm not doing that. You, you do know that God can change your name. Amen. We, do, we know that God, hey, the illustration of Jacob, his name meant supplanter or trickster, and God changed, God changed his name to Israel, which means a prince with God. Amen. Now, I'm going to read you a story. How many ever heard, and I'll, I'll by a show of hands, how many ever heard of a lady named Wilma Rudolph? Two. Uh, maybe y'all didn't hear me. How many ever heard of a lady named Wilma Rudolph? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. I just told y'all who she was. What y'all listening to? Well, listen to this. She was a successful Olympic athlete in the 1960s. But most don't know her story. She was born to 16th of 18 children in a poor black family in Middle Tennessee. She weighed only four pounds and one ounce. At the age of four, she contracted polio and lost the use of her left leg. The battle with polio left her weakened. She immediately developed chronic pneumonia and scarlet fever. Even though she managed to survive those deadly diseases, she spent the bulk of her childhood life as a cripple. It was only through years of therapy which her mother carried her on to one, one day of the week in determination that Wilma was able to regain the use of her leg. She went on to play high school basketball. Now listen to this. She went on to play high school basketball, setting a single season record for the most points scored, 803 points in 25 games. In 1960, she represented the United States in the Olympics, which was held in Rome, Italy. She won gold medals in all three events which she competed, both in the 100-meter dash, 200 meters. She finished at least three yards in front of her nearest competitor. She, kept, she won the world record in the 100 meter, set a new Olympic record in the two, and in the 400-meter relay, she brought her team back from behind to win the gold medal. How many of us can say, I want to rise above the crowd? I don't care what my daddy did. I don't care what my family did I don't hey so you got to understand so they got they some people in this church that your family was known as a bunch of drunks but glory to God you ain't your family was known as a bunch of drug addicts but you ain't you made up your mind I'm rising above that I ain't got, I don't care what the devil call me I'm going to do something different Amen. understand something sometimes you got to get out the comfort zone 
Look at his performance in life. The Bible says he was more honorable <laughs> than all his brethren. Wow. If that was just it, if they put that on a tombstone, he was more honorable than all his brethren. That would be worth it right there. Sometimes you just got to decide to do better. Sometimes you got to realize, I'm not going to be like my daddy. I'm not going to be like my mama. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better. David, David's told the story many, many times in Sunday school about how that his ancestors uh, uh, was, was alcoholics and, 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 and lived lives of sin, and his daddy made the choice to do better. And because his daddy made a choice to do better, he's in church tonight, Tanner's in church tonight, Tucker's in church tonight, somewhere probably, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, because somebody made a choice to do better. He was more honorable than all his brethren. His name is remembered today because he was godly in a godless society. To this day, there's, there's songs written about Jabez. There's books been written about Jabez. Somebody tell me what Jabez's brother's name was. I rest my case. He made a choice. Now look, look, look how he prayed. Number one, he prayed for prosperity. Verse 10, Jabez's prayer for prosperity is twofold. Number one, first, he prayed that the Lord fullest blessings on his life, and then he prayed for his boundaries to be extended. Number one, he asked for God's best. Hear me? He asked for God's best. Let me ask you a question. How many of us want God's best? Rest of y'all get saved. How many of us want God's best? Raise your hand. If you want God's best in your life, raise your hand. How many of us are willing to give God our best? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got, you got to get out your comfort zone, Brother Jerry, to give God your best. You got to get out your comfort zone to give God your best. It's all right to want God's best, but we don't want to give God our best. Jabez was willing to give God his best. So you can't pray a prayer like this if you ain't willing. Have you ever got on the altar and you was praying and God spoke to you about something? You on the altar and you praying about something and you you asking God, Lord, Lord, if you'll just do this and do this and do this, God, I'll 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 do, I'll, I'll, I'll do this or I'll do that. And God said, Ain't that the same thing you prayed last year? And you ain't held up your end yet. I want God's best in my life. I do. I, Brother Ralph, I want God's best in my life. But I got to be willing to give God my best if I want his best. Jabez was willing to give God his very best. And the thing about it is, the problem is a lot of times we settle for mediocrity. We settle for just so-so. Somebody say amen right there. But the Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3, bring ye all ye tithes into the storehouse that they may the, meet in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I, I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I told you this before. It's almost like that God's got a warehouse up there. With Kevin's name on it. God's got a warehouse with Kevin's name on it. Everything in that warehouse is Kevin's. When Kevin gets where he can handle it. Everything, there's a warehouse jammed full with Trevor's name on it. But until Trevor can handle it, God ain't going to open the door and pour it out. Now, I believe, I believe I could stop right here and preach on tithing. I, I'm not going to preach on tithing, but I believe I could. Let me tell you, if you ain't giving God your best, God ain't pouring it out on you. Amen. That goes with tithing. That goes with talent. That goes with everything. Understand something. When this young lady got up and played that little miniature guitar called a ukulele, right? <laughs> Some of y'all didn't know I know that. The more she plays it and the more she sings for God, the better she's going to get at it. 
I thought about it as, as and I knew what I was going to preach. And I thought about it as the band was playing, and I was watching Preacher's Dad on that bass. You just picked that thing up when? About six months ago. He's a whole lot better tonight than he was six months ago. And the more he does it, the better he's going to get. And the more he dedicates himself to it, the better he's going to get. I want God's best in my life. But I got to give God my best. Amen. Jabez had a prayer. He asked for God's blessing uh, to expand his borders. He asked for God's power. He asked God to put his hand on his life. He wasn't content to just live like everybody else. Have you ever noticed that some, it seems like some people's got God all over them and some don't? You ever notice that? Seems like some people just got God all over them and some people don't. And it seems like some people just look like a powerhouse Christian, but they ain't. Amen. I mean, some people's got that look. I mean, some people, some, and, and, and these, these young preachers are going, are going to see a lot, a lot of this in their, in their lifetime. And some of us older ones, we know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, they'll come in the back door, son, they'll have a King James Bible as big as a, a, a Bible you set on the coffee table at home. And they got on their suit and they got on their tie and they just walk. And when they talk, they talk like this right here. You know, they want you to think they're all that. And I'd rather have some little old lady in my church praying for me. Give you a great example. The Apostle Paul was not, was not a whole lot to look on. Paul was, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10 says this, For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Most, of the, most, most scholars believe that Paul was a short man. Most scholars believe that Paul was almost blind. Most scholars believe that he was, he was frail in his body. But have you ever heard in the Bible of a more powerhouse Christian? You ever heard of anybody else that could pray and somebody come back to life? Have you ever heard of anybody else in the Bible that could start singing and the jail start shaking? I'm telling you right now, I'd rather have Paul praying for me than anybody else I know of. But Paul got out of his comfort zone. D.L. Moody, how many's ever heard that name? D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was uneducated. D.L. Moody was inarticulate, but a powerhouse for God. Amen. It ain't about ability, it's about availability. How many of us have the ability? How many of us, we, 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 we can do things for God, but yet we say, I don't want to, I can't. I just don't know if I can. I just don't know if I can sing in front of that church. Oh my goodness! Get up there, just shaking and carrying on. Let me tell you something. I got a brother, and my wife and my family's here. I got a brother that that will sing in church. He's got a very deep voice, and been singing in church for a while now, David. But when he holds the microphone, it's like I'm not lying. I, am I lying? I'm not lying, Emma girl. You've seen him, Benji. I mean, like that right there. I mean, just. But he gets up and sings. When Abby stands back here and sings, Abby, Abby's trying to, Abby's doing her best to hide behind this pulpit. Amen. She's trying as hard as she can. One day we're just going to move the pulpit out of the way. And we got people in the church that can sing like an angel, but you'll sit back there and not get out of your comfort zone. We got people in this church that could do things in that Easter play, but you'll sit back there and not get out of your comfort zone. We got people in this church that could teach Sunday school as good as this man and can sing as good as this man and can preach as good as these men, but you won't get out of your comfort zone and you won't let God be God in your life. I know it's hard to believe. 
But I used to be shy. Don't laugh. I, I did. I'm, I'm just being honest. <clears throat> I'm just being honest. Being on the highway patrol got me out of a lot of that. Having to meet people every day and you learn how to talk with people. Um, had to, we had to go through training. I had to, uh, when we go to court, I'd have to prosecute my own cases, especially traffic court. You have, to, you, have, you have to be the lawyer. That got me out of a lot of that. When we got in church, I remember the first song me and my wife ever sang in church together was uh, Sweeter Gets the Journey. I was scared to death. Come back to White Savannah and say, oh, we want you to sing in the choir. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Oh, you, that, you just fit there with the crowd. All right, all right, I'll try it. What, what, what long, there was, it was one little line in a song, one little line in a song. We got to have somebody sing this. The guy said, Brother Tim, you hold the microphone. You sing that one little line. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, all right, I, I'll try it, I'll try it. Next thing I know, they wanted to sing Still in the Fire. You going to sing it. And then they wanted me to teach Sunday school. I just, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can do that. I just don't know if I can get up in front of all them people. Now let me ask you a question. And I'm not saying this in absolutely no way of bragging. Okay, understand that. Where would you be today if I'd have stayed in my comfort zone? And it ain't about me. But until somebody makes up their mind, I'm sick of being in the baguettes. I'm not going to be in the baguettes no more. I'm standing up for Jesus. How many of us, where would we be today if somebody hadn't bought Robert, if Skip hadn't bought Robert Lloyd a cassette to sing in church? Think about it, folks. We got all the talent in the world, but it's sitting in the pew. Now, and I, let me tell you, something. our church is blessed. Oh, my goodness. Whew. We got some of the best singers I've ever heard in my life right here in this church. We got some great singers. Our church is blessed. But how many others could step up? How many others could step up? Let me ask you a question. Are you just satisfied with being in the baguettes? Or you want to be different? Are you, satisfied, are you satisfied with where you're at spiritually right now? Or do you want to be stronger? Are you satisfied with where the church is at spiritually? Or do you want the church to be stronger? Are you happy with where you're at? Are you happy with where your family's at? Are you happy with where your, your, your children are at? Or do you want them to be stronger? Are you ready to get out of your comfort zone? Brother Robert, y'all come get us a song. God, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, so much for your blessings. And God, the main thing about this whole sermon is that at the very end, God, you heard Jabez's prayer and you answered Jabez's prayer. And God, I know, God, you're still moving right now in this church. God, just help us to realize, God, if we'll make up our mind, we want to get out of our comfort zone. Lord, you'll answer that prayer. God, you'll bless. God, you can multiply. God, you can expand the borders just like you did with Jabez. But God, help us right now, God, to be honest with you. Help us to want to grow, God. Help us to want to get better. Help us to want to get out of our comfort zone. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will, let's stand.
If you want to get out of your comfort zone and you want to do better for God, why don't you just come down and talk to him about it? church we're going to start about four if you can come out if you can't get here to six that'll be fine too come on out for that bible institute sign up sheet for the easter play we still need some more men amen sign get out the comfort zone let's do something for jesus amen if you don't we're going to start drafting we're going to give you about a week or so more to sign up and then we're going to start drafting come to you said don't you want to do something for the lord <laughs> Amen. Don't forget Bible Institute, 630 tomorrow here at the church. Uh, we'll probably be in, either in here or in one of the classrooms. Just come on out for Bible Institute. Revival at Canaan has started tonight. So tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, the revival at Canaan Wednesday night. We'll be going over with them uh, for revival. Ladies Auxiliary, Masters, Men's going to combine. It's going to be this Thursday night. Come out for that. Got a lot going on. Amen. 6.30, I believe it is Thursday night. Amen. I love you. How many enjoyed the singing tonight? Amen. 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 We're going to have to get them back. Amen. Appreciate y'all being here. You did a great job, sis. Good job. Amen. I love you. Nobody else has anything on your heart. Amen. Brother Skip, dismiss us in prayer. <laughs>